Um, we're going to talk beer and pubs uh, now. The British Beer and Pub Association say beer sales, I think this is just beer sales, um, or maybe just sales generally, were down 38% in 2021 compared to 2019. It's maybe um, coming out of the no <laughs> Sherlock department, that really, because of the pandemic. Pubs suffered a loss of £5.7 billion from beer sales alone last year. Uh, let's talk to Steve Alton, who's the chair of the British Institute of Innkeeping. Uh, Steve, morning to you. Thank you very much for your time and welcome to the Burnsy Show here on BBC Radio Homicide. None of this should be a, a, any great surprise to any of us. The, the big question is, what are we going to do about it? Yeah, absolutely. Good morning. A lot last year, you know, it was closures, it was severe restrictions, no great surprise. The vast majority of pubs and our members, 10,000 of them, run predominantly single pubs across the whole of the UK. So trading was down anywhere between 20 and up to 40 percent, which effectively meant they made losses. But the relevancy is they're starting now, as, we, as obviously we begin to reopen again, in a pretty fragile way. You know, one in three have no cash in the business whatsoever. And those that do have, it'll run out in a couple of months time. Uh, most have got debts. And uh, unfortunately, even with repayments, uh, the average pub is about £40,000 in debt, specifically from the pandemic as well. And trade is down. You know, it's, it's subdued. We've, we've fallen out the habit uh, of going to pubs, unfortunately, and, and we have to desperately rebuild that confidence as we all kind of get back to obviously what normal now is. Uh, but equally, I think we've changed. And that's one of the biggest challenges that our publicans are now facing, where we've had two years of eating and drinking at home and socialising when we could. Um, and, and now our expectations, I think, are a lot higher. And I think we've tried different things. I'm like, I think, like your good self, I, I enjoy a, a great pint and a, you know, a great local beer as well. And, we, and we've tried lots of new things in lockdown. So actually, as they come back, um, there's a real expectation, you know, our publicans have to deliver. And those that are doing it are doing really well. And unfortunately, those that are missing the mark, they, don't, they only get one chance now. You know, we are paying more for the experience than we have in the past. And I think we're far more discerning. So the opportunity is there. We all want to go to the pub because what a great, you know, fantastic experience a great pub is. Um, but that does put extra pressure on licensees. And right now, you know, th they're facing the recovery in a pretty, a pretty fragile state. I, I, I won't disagree with you, Steve, because I do love a pub and I do love a pint. Regular listeners to this show uh, will know that. And I've been saying recently, when is, is one of the side effects of COVID a two-day hangover? But anyway, um, that aside, maybe from a public health point of view, it's maybe a good thing we're drinking less. I th I think and you've got to reverse. fight. And you've got to fight that. <laughs> you think it's the reverse? Go on then. I, absolutely. Look, you know, one of the one of the crippling things that's happened to people during lockdown has has been lo loneliness, isolation, missing that social contact with friends and family, and, and it's had a, you know, a severe effect on us as a, as a society. And the one place in our communities that is open and accessible and, and friendly is is that local pub. And we've got some amazing operators. We've got one down um, just in the Wimbledon area that did a, you know, don't be alone at Christmas event. And effectively had 150 people in their pub who would have been on their own at Christmas. But they came to the pub. They were given a fabulous experience for nothing. They were picked up in taxis and brought in. And you can imagine the difference that made to their life. So it's not just about the drink or the food and the drink. It's about the experience. And that's why we go to pubs. We go to pubs for that, for that buzz, that energy, that seeing, you know, friends, neighbours, family and new friends we've not even met yet. But I think, you know, pubs, pubs are evolving anyway. Pubs are a very different place now. If it's for the, the pub quiz, the live music, to the, you know, the beer festivals in the summer, they're doing so many, many more things. And they're going to have to keep doing those things to bring in different type of consumers. And that's everything from playing games in pubs and, you know, the, the pool tournaments and the dance tournaments and there's some fabulous kind of game systems now that you can get in to get people together so it, so it is about experience so the health argument i understand where you're coming from but i would say the reverse is true we you know we need these places to connect in you know in professionally run environments in in society people drinking at home i would argue is has, has been a you know has been a problem and that's something that actually pubs can be a you know, part of the solution if you've got a thought on all this, do let me know. Uh, Look North had a, a, an, an interesting feature uh, about a Lincolnshire pub the other day where um, the landlord basically, it's a, it's a fairly small village pub, uh, or a small village, quite a big pub, 
and and basically at weekends he's he, he's now making more money by renting out the whole pub to Airbnbers, groups of lads or whatever, and they come, they stay in the pub, and they basically buy all the beer, but the locals can't get in the pub. So there are, and it's causing quite a, lot, a bit of a ruckus, but I thought it was a good idea because he's actually making money. Well, I mean, look, pubs are going to have to diversify, and that's absolutely clear. And those that are, you know, those that have invested during the lockdown and, you know, built some amazing outdoor spaces. I mean, let's, let's be honest, our, our environment, our weather isn't great at times, but that we've created some fantastic places that you want to go and spend time in outside. We've got camping pods in certain, you know, country locations where you, you can go to the pub for the, for the weekend and, you know, kind of camp on the edge of the garden and eat and drink in the pub, and you've got the smallest walk home ever. So all those things are, are going to be needed going forward but but pubs look, pubs are, are very special great pubs and you know we have obviously lots of them within our members uh, are, are a fabulous place to go and but it, it's it's the look across the bar it's the smile it's the it's a, it's great to see you again uh, and then you need to do everything else as well and and for me you know it's like those great local brewers that you know we've got across the country that it's something you couldn't get in lockdown that great pint of cask beer which is unique to great british pubs is something very very special and can't be replicated at home but you know we have to work really hard to get people back in but look how many know, members have you lost how many pubs have shut keith Sorry, uh, not Keith. Keith, the next caller, Stephen. <laughs> right. Sorry, Steve. Well, look, we, we, th there's been about 10,000 licensed premises lost through the whole pandemic, and that's of, d of different types. That's not just pubs. That's small re family restaurants, etc., as well. But we are starting to see more and more, you know, failure, and we are seeing a lot of pubs who are seriously considering their future. We've just done an extensive survey of our members, and one in ten now really don't think their their business is viable, and they're looking for a way to to, to leave the pub. Um, and half of them are really dependent on what the government decides to do in terms of ongoing support, because they're going to need that trading support to support their recovery. We, these guys have had two years of either you know, severe closure or severe restrictions, and you can't just bounce back from that. So we are looking for that extension, that low rate VAT. Business rates is a huge cost for these businesses. And we're looking for that to be suspended for a further 12 months to give these guys the breathing space to actually get going again, because we want them in our communities. We do not want high streets and communities with boarded up pubs. We know the impact that has on everything else locally. You, know, you only have to walk down certain high streets now where you lose the pub. There's no footfall. There's no customers. The small independent shops go as well. And we end up in some very, very difficult positions that nobody wants. So hospitality as a whole is, is fundamental for the high street communities and rebuilding. So, you know, look, keep supporting them. They're working incredibly hard, but they, they would uh, be hugely appreciated, you know, you coming back in. And uh, I'm sure you'll be greeted with a smile. Well, uh, we wish you well with it. A couple of my listeners in the past few weeks have said, well, I'm, I've got back and going to the pub because it's cheaper because um, they're paying me gas and electricity, basically, than I mean, gas and electricity and me telly on at home so i'm saving on the energy bills while i'm having a pint uh, there might be a there might be a marketing angle in there steve thank you very much for your time appreciate My that uh, stephen Knowlton, uh, chair of the british institute of innkeeping you got a thought on that or anything else <laughs>